Hey everybody, this is Julie at thisbeautifulfarmlife.com and today is our meat chicken butchering day. So butchering any animal is not a fun chore. Um, first of all, it involves killing an animal and um, nobody really enjoys killing animals. But this is what farmers do. We are raising these animals for meat. Um, they are not pets. Um, I know that's hard for some people to understand, but we feel like this is what God created these animals for and is for our food and our pleasure. Um, the, the meat chickens for meat, the laying chickens for eggs. So this is what we do. We don't take it lightly. We do it carefully. We treat these animals well and um, we're going to take you along on the journey. Here's our little fat meat birds. They got a little bigger than we had. Um, planned for because we had to feed them for an extra week because of our harvest of cherries being late and we didn't have time to do them. So this book is um, kind of the Bible of all um, farm books and we've had it for years and years and years and Carla has I don't know how many editions of this book so if you can get your hands on one, it is great. There's tons of information in there and we can just look up the whole process uh, of butchering again when we, when we haven't done it very often. We don't do this every year even, and um, even though we probably should. And even if we did do it every year, it's once a year. So it's kind of a little bit rusty every time you go through it. So don't feel bad if you're doing that. Um, it's hard to get at all the information every time. So these are our Cornish Cross meat birds. Um, we bought um, all males and they are now eight weeks old, is that right? Eight or nine. Uh, maybe nine, nine weeks because we ended up going an extra week. And they're weighing about seven and a half, eight pounds um, live. And so we're going to have pretty big chickens to cook up. So a little bigger than we normally have, but it's going to be fine and they'll be great. So, so we just use a hatchet and a bucket um, and we cut above the crop where you won't get um, sick and we put them in a bucket and let them drain out in the bucket and then we take them from there to the scalding pot. So this is our scalding pot, just using the little burner here and we'll scald them before we pluck them chicken plucker that we're using. We're borrowing it from a friend. You can put three chickens in there at once. It's pretty cool. This is where we're just gonna gut them and clean them here so we can just dispose of this later. Now we have to just gut them out and clean them up and put them in bags. Okay, so this is just pulling out of the guts and trimming them loose. And this one obviously didn't pluck really, really well, so we're um, on a learning curve. We only do this um, Sporadic. sporadically. <laughs> we haven't actually done this for about six years, five years maybe. No, yeah. it hasn't been that long. Maybe four years. A while. And uh, so it's always a learning curve when you get started again, so this is the first ones. After the guts are out, then you need to take out the neck. So that's what he's working on now. So we will be keeping these chicken feet. They are kind of strange, but they're really good to throw in with your bone broth because they um, bring a lot of nutrients and collagen to the broth that are really good for you. We realized later that if we had put the feet under the water while we scalded the chicken, the skin would have come off in the plucker. Now we have to take each one out of the freezer, blanch it, and peel the skin off because we didn't do it before we packaged them. So here's how we bring them in the house. We just bring them in in this tote um, from the field. There's a bucket full of necks and feet that we're going to save for bone broth. And there's the chickens that have been gutted and we need to wash them and bag them up. Okay, so this is our chicken all done, uh, one tray full, I, we have more to do. But we always put it in the bags and then we put it into a refrigerator. This is our extra 
spare fridge for um, the large quantities of things that we buy and extra produce and we keep it in the fridge for two to three days um, to kind of let it tenderize and chill down and um, then we move it from there to the freezer for the rest of the winter um, until we're ready to eat them so um, good stuff to do just to kind of keep your chicken tender and nice okay so we're most of the way done with our chickens um, this is what they look like all bagged up we just weighed this one and it is six and a half pounds dressed so they're pretty big chickens and we're really pleased with them um, they're gonna feed our family well with uh, one chicken for our family so we aren't by any means chicken experts this is not a how-to uh, butcher chickens this is just the way we do it uh, we don't do it very often and we have a lot to learn so I just want to encourage you that if you're thinking about jumping into this just um, read all that you can and go do it that's how you learn the most so um, each time we do it we learn something new and today we're using the chicken plucker we're not having real great success with it even though we've talked to the owner a couple times and it's still not coming off real clean so we're doing a lot of uh, picking the feathers but um, we are getting our meat into our freezer and that is the most important part here that we have nice uh, grass-fed um, grain-fed and grass-fed pasture-raised meat chickens that we will now have in our freezer for the winter and we know where they've come from we know what they've been fed and we know that they're safe and we know that they had uh, a really good life while they lived here so um, that's the most important part okay so we were having some trouble getting the plucker to work right and we figured out that we were using this cooker over here and the thermometer we were using to check it wasn't right. The water needs to be 145 degrees and our thermometer was off so they, it, the water was not hot enough and then when we plucked them they weren't coming clean. But now you can see that they're coming really clean and um, the feathers are really out. And, it's going to be um, just a few tail feathers to pull out and everything else looks really good. Lesson learned, but in the meantime, we've picked a lot of feathers that we're getting better as we go here. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope that it uh, yeah, encourages you to go try it and um, get your homestead going. And if you enjoyed this, uh, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and come back and join me here each week. I do a new video on fresh nourishing food, wholesome living and simple farmhouse beauty. You can also catch me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you haven't gone over there yet, um, check me out there. Thanks. Bye now.